this is to raise the head. Yes, you not. I am not able to raise the head. You are not able to raise the hand. Yes. Oh, okay. Reactions is allowed. I haven't it changed allowed. anything. It is allowed. Not yes, 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 it is. I can do it. it okay. Yeah, it is allowed. Yeah, you can unmute. You can unmute. Uh, I can see Parimal and everyone. So, you can unmute and you can uh, speak. Uh, no, Adisha. but in between. We... Sorry, Vina. See, what happens. Huh. If, if I'm raising, you'll be... You can wait for that. If I'm That's fine. Fine. We, we are good. It is all our own conversation. We are good with that. <laughs> Nothing to worry. Okay. Okay. A quick intro. I don't want to go into details, but just like uh, the 18 plus years of IT experience and the main recent thing is uh, the ICF PCC. The, I am a professional certified coach and trying to help folks with the career coaching, life coaching, and as a mentor coach. And the latest uh, one I did is through the design thinking innovation management from IM Lucknow. So these are my latest certifications. The reason why I included is the same points which we discussed, you know, like it should be in the sequential order, the roles which we are targeting, the role which we are focusing and the role which we are playing the relevant recent current role and the target role. There is what we need to list down. And as you can see, like the sequence is also followed. This is just for my introduction. I just added this slide, but the same format or the same template could be used in our resume as well. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, just coming back to your point, like if we can use, I can simply use this as my one single slide or one single page resume as well, because I have all required information within this itself. Of course, I might have to add, tweak it just a little bit, but yes, majority of the things, whatever it is required, wherever I am going uh, for as a, uh, panelist or a speaker or a reviewer or, or any contributing to the, any of the agile communities, they're asking a one single slide uh, resume format. I'm sharing this from my side, not even a two page <laughs> resume. This is what I'm sharing because it has all the list uh, required or relevant from that specific roles perspective. And uh, uh, I'm making use of it. Okay. So oh. no, actually you are telling about the thing about uh, you are presenting. That's reason. Yes, like yes, that, that's why. That's why. Exactly. That's why. I mentioned group discussion is context specific. Hmm. Context specific. Yes. But when you are okay. saying about resume, then I told mm -hmm. you about resume how to be, how it should be. Mm -hmm. That I told you. Actually, this what you are showing is right. For the presentation, mm. it is what in uh, exactly yes. Like, That's what. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vinod, go ahead. No, it is good. I said for slide wise, okay. it is good. For presenting, it is good. But for the sure. perspective, this should this, this should not work. Yes. Okay. Thanks. So let's come to the review of resume, which uh, we all want to discuss or which you all are going to focus and again feel free to add the pointers this is just uh, i will add some points from my side and the forum is all open everyone can feel free to add the pointers so let's start with the career objective or the key accomplishments or summary the list of certifications and the projects and experiences and any additional details these are the uh, common five sections which we come across in any of the resume what are the format or the template we use or how many of our number of pages the resume is these are the typical uh, sections which i observed in any of the resume so there's a reason these are the top things which we want to discuss today if in case any additional sections we can uh, discuss that as well okay let's get started with the career objective my personal perspective, it should be crisp and clear statement within two to three lines, not more than that. Sometimes we even observe like a paragraphs or like a, uh, half more than half the page within the resume, the career object is listed. It might not be relevant. It might not be giving a clear context to the panelist or the HR or the recruiters. Multiple roles listed in the career object too, it could be a flag. It could be a red flag. Why red flag? 
the panelist might get confused which role we are applying for or which role we are uh, looking for. Many times, of course, we are not discussing about the job descriptions, how they are clubbing different roles or different responsibilities into one single role. No, but what is the role we are targeting for? Like as Vishal mentioned, right? So we need to uh, mention what role we are applying for. Maybe it is better, it is relevant if we apply, if we mention that within the career objective. Right? Even Shashank mentioned the experience will be one thing, but the role which we are applying is another thing. There might not be a match or there might not be a sync, which could be one of the reason why the resume might not be, might have not shortlisted even. Right? And the di another point which I observed is like the distinguish overall and relevant experience. This might help sometimes. Again, might help sometimes. Reason, like uh, right now, as I mentioned, I have 18 plus years of experience. Within that, what is my agile experience or what is my uh, experience as an agile coach? So we can highlight that separate, sharing that uh, overall 18 years of experience, which includes eight years of uh, agile experience sort of thing. So why this is important is like some of the uh, opportunities which we are coming across recently, they are not mentioning they, uh, clearly. They are mentioning uh, in the groups as well we discussed, right? So they will mention uh, three to five years as scrum experience. Is it oral experience or is it relevant experience? We are not sure because it is not clearly mentioned in the JD. So Maybe we can mention, we can differentiate what is it, the overall experience versus relevant experience or some cases, few folks are removing that overall experience and they're just keeping relevant experience. Yeah, even that, if it works, yes, that's better. Right, we don't, there is no one single way or one single point to mention, but this is my uh, observation that overall versus relevant experience, if we can segregate or if we can differentiate, that might bring in some uh maybe some value or some pointers around the resume so this one quick question here that's what you said yes. about experience mm -hmm. so basically uh, a guy like me who has a, the couple of decades of experience and a little more we mm -hmm. would have played a lot of roles as we came on Mm -hmm. And given the nature of uh, things changing so quickly, mm -hmm. if I get to know that, okay, there is a delivery manager role, then I have to kind of quickly change my profile mm -hmm. to adequately suit and uh, make that change, right? And if yes. I can also play a scrum master or an agile coach, so I mm -hmm. may have to have maybe at a given point of time based on the r and which is required, Maybe mm -hmm. three or four variants of my profile, right? So if there is a requirement for a delivery manager, then I can mm -hmm. get that profile. And if it is for a agile coach, it can be a different profile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're saying that we shouldn't mix multiple roles. But today we are living exactly. in a world where we know in service-based industries that we are being made to perform multiple roles. We are yes, not talking uh, about the purest uh role uh, definitions right so there is a problem right we cannot put multiple roles on one side mm -hmm. but also the companies are expecting multiple roles to be done so there are chances where if the panel looks at say for example i come with a delivery will you not be kind of curious to take that person first because they see both the roles they mm -hmm. think that, okay, once I spit all guy, so I'm kind of going to take that profile and do the interview of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 100% uh, valid uh, question, Prem, because that's what uh, the ground reality is. And especially in the past six months, this is what we are observing. Two, three roles clubbed into one single job description, whether it is exactly. internal or external, that is what is happening. But yeah. my <laughs> point is that we can mention, yes, we shall. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Satish, I just interrupted. Uh, but yeah, just to add what Prem said, right? Uh, 
it becomes uh, very tough even if you are a project manager then you went on a scrum master role and then again you are working on a project manager if i changed three companies right earlier i was project manager then i took scrum master role now again i have been hired as a project manager so uh, how do you actually write different roles uh, in general right because more or less uh, we worked on same lines basically uh, every company has not adapted to agile or something you know they say they are agile but they never be agile right so in those scenarios uh, is it something that you suggest bluffing uh, by saying that we only worked in one domain or how no need to no need to bluff uh, anything vishal so uh, my point is like uh, i mean the same question similar question which uh, prem as well mentioned right so uh, my point is like see the responsibilities might be different responsibilities might be club from different uh, role perspective within the organization let's suppose like we are applying for a, a, some xyz company where they uh, we observed that the responsibility the role is mentioned as project manager for example but the responsibilities are listed as project manager scrum master and maybe something else two three different roles so based upon that as uh, prem mentioned like we can uh, we need to re uh, redefine or we need to refine that statement showcasing that yes i have experience playing role of project manager and scrum master as well Right? Does it answer your question, Vishal? Uh, yes. And yes. Prem, uh, Prem, how about you? Yeah, it slightly contradicts with the second bullet what we have here. Uh, yes. That is why See, I the, wanted to bring that. Here. Yes, my point is like uh, based upon the job description. I might have. Uh, yeah. mention more clear but based upon the job description see few organizations they will mention we want only project manager with all the list of project manager pure project manager responsibilities if yeah. that is the yeah. case it should be definitely exactly the that role specific right and yeah uh, it should be one very... slight variant which i was trying to add is okay so assuming you said like okay you want a pure play project manager but my profile contains both, say a project manager and a senior scrum master or an advanced scrum master. Mm -hmm. uh, while writing the JD or while writing the description, they were kind of looking only for a project manager. And something happened, the scrum master ran away from that project. And mm. so now, when I go for an interview, they also need a scrum master. Right? Mm. That means yes. could have changed. Mm. But then if I actually had another uh, role which is also being mentioned in my profile mm -hmm. that is going to get me that uh, extra brownies where I can see to that uh, I kind of consider both right so both mm -hmm. are there in my profile so my profile yes. may get a possible weightage yeah. yes uh, uh, so Prem uh, this is like just the starting point career objective which you are discussing right so Okay. Here we might not be mentioning, but in the certifications or in the key accomplishments, definitely we'll be mentioning about that Scrum Master experience or the other experience, right? So mm -hmm. there, uh, of course, right? So uh, based upon, again, it is like uh, playing around uh, based upon the context, understanding the context and making sure we are uh, playing around it. So what my perspective is like, see, I started my career as a QA engineer. And then. Okay. I moved as a test lead, team lead. Then I moved into a scrum master. Then an agile coach. So uh, scrum master and agile coach is what I might focus more in the career objective rather than the QA uh, engineer or the uh, team lead. Because that is not what I am uh, targeting right now. So that might be mentioned in the uh, key accomplishments or the certification of the project experience, but not in the initial two, three lines of that career objective. Agreed. Uh, you got it. Yeah, I am also not going that level in terms of our yeah. pretty much first 10 years of experience. But very recently, yes. if mm. you have been doing diverse uh, roles, like a manager role as well as a scrum master role, which are completely yeah, we diverse. Can definitely, we can definitely mention that because that is what many organizations are expecting. right? So whether we yeah. accept or not, many organizations, that's what uh, they are expecting. Right? So, exactly. Uh, 
let's quickly go through it. Uh, I could see Vinod raised your hand. Vinod, your question is clarified. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, when you say about uh, when you are handling multiple roles, like from uh -huh. master and project manager, we can uh -huh. mention uh, one uh, like uh, when you are applying for like Scrum Master, you apply uh -huh. Scrum Master and when you mention Scrum Master and hyper project manager, you can uh, in your uh, uh, yes title you can mention that 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 combination and... is allowed. That combination is allowed. Yeah. I, I I mean, uh, the reason why I explicitly mentioned is like I came across a lot of, uh, again, might be my personal experience. I came across a lot of uh, weird combinations of the roles, which might not be realistic. That's the reason I clearly mentioned. Of course, I, I totally agree. We can mention that Scrum Master and Project Manager or sometimes it could be Scrum Master and Lead or any com Correct. relevant combination. It should be relevant combination. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Sashank? Uh, yes, a couple of things, sir. Uh, as you rightly yeah. said, we need to focus on one role specific. And uh, when you are going to hire a hierarchy, we need to focus on one role which we need to entertain, right? And uh, guys, uh, this is my experience. Whenever you are sharing CV, the panelist won't look your CV much as what you are saying he is listening more, right? So uh, even though you are saying right now I'm focusing on on you know Scrum Master role and if you see he was a senior software test engineer just like what uh, it happened when I started my career just like Vilas Satish sir he he was into QA role even I was into QA role then got into leadership role uh, test lead then I switched my career but my designation was same so in that time you need to be very much cautious he on paper designation versus role playing both are different it cannot be the same. Right, so you have to very much focus what you are saying versus what you are portraying, and uh, if that that is uh, you know you are able to manage, I think the rest can, can be doable. And uh, it's more into your job description how much and what uh, you are showing. For example, a ten plus guy or eleven plus twelve plus, he cannot write four to five pages of lengthy CV for each and every project. No, 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 not to not, not to mention, you have to have short description of what you did, one two line roles and responsibility. Or maybe designation works. And what currently it is showing, that has to be done. Yeah. That's it, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Shashank. Anand? Yeah, yeah. Just two cents from my side. So, as you sure. rightly said, uh, uh, Venkat, right, that, uh, uh, you know, if I have played multiple roles like developer, say, in my, if we, if we take my example, I started my career with developer then uh you know systems architect engineer then uh into project management scrum master uh you know delivery manager so uh you know we should be actually writing what role we are targeting to get right mm -hmm. so in our next role right that should be um, mentioned in your career objective there um, mm -hmm. There is no point in mentioning all the roles like developers where, where I started my career from, right? Wherever I want to target my next role in the new target organization, that should be mentioned in your, uh, you know, in the summary or a career objective part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Anand. That is, that is one thing which I wanted to share. Definitely. Definitely. That's really helpful. Thanks. Uh -huh. And... Uh... Sishadri. Okay. Yeah, uh, Subramaniam. Yeah. Hi. Hi, sir. Hi, team. Good evening. Uh, coming to like multiple conversations which we had, uh, as uh, Satish rightly said, that you know uh, now two three roles are being clubbed. Like uh, me also worked as a project manager and scrum master and now being continued as a senior scrum master. I mean, uh, we usually work with multiple teams and uh, try to be a facilitator and do multiple works, right? So it gives us a confidence that we can apply for an agile coach role, though the organization might be small or big. Right. So mm. what I think is, uh, you know, uh, it is always better to keep multiple formats of resume as someone mentioned, like career objective will be, of course, it should be changed depending on the role. Uh, and we should have a multiple set of resumes, which may help. 
but what i did is in pursuit of doing this now i see like career objective itself is missing because of mm. you know maintaining multiple resumes so the <laughs> this <laughs> so this is one of the thing i just want to convey yeah thank you yeah sure, sure. Um, so, yes. so, so just just wanted to add one thing here. Uh, you know, we should be matching our JD with CV. Okay, but yes, uh, in such a way that you should first of all have a focus on your career objective. You should not be trying to match every JD with CV. Mm, mm, mm. That's another point. <laughs> okay. And uh, at the same time, I have a different opinion. We will come back to that at a later point of time as we go into yep. the sites. Uh, Pariman. Yeah, so my question is more from the point of view of like uh, whichever role that we are applying, suppose if mm. it is for a scrum master or for a project manager. So what are the key things uh, that are required for these two type of roles that mm -hmm. the interviewer is looking for? Like it's if those things are not there, it is a deal breaker for the interviewer. So mm -hmm. I would like to understand those things. Like if say someone is going for a scrum master role, then what mm -hmm. are the deal breakers? And if someone is doing for a PM role, what are the deal breakers? Mm -hmm. Like if mm -hmm. this thing is not there, I am not even interested in interviewing this person. Mm. I mean, so those are two main areas, I think. I will be interested Sh in going. Sure, maybe now sure. Or maybe later. Yeah, yeah. Maybe later as well as we go into the next sure. point, we might be covering or we might be touching some of it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thanks for that. Uh, Rupesh, sir? Well, this is something which I have observed a lot uh, in my personal sense. Uh -huh. Career objective has to be shortened, number one. Uh -huh. uh, truly, uh -huh. because 26 years of experience, you cannot put in one line and they might not be interested. Uh -huh. Number two point that is very, very more relevant is uh, I have to reduce this, uh, you know, multiple rollism, how much I have to show them. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, when I'm seeing JDs, which are coming, say, for director delivery or going mm -hmm. for a head of COE, positions are lesser, number one. Number two, mm -hmm. how much they write is almost, uh, my life history is the same as what they want. And then I have to send them a three-page resume because I am not able to put in, in one page. Uh, so, mm. so I saw in your resume what you've done very beautifully is you only showed the qualifications and a few pointers which say okay I've done this that this that and this mm. Mm. this uh, workshop is really really helpful on that, on that. Mm -hmm. thanks thanks for that because uh, even I struggled a lot like uh, how can I mention my 18 years of experience in uh, one page or two page or three pages that is what the world is going across and as uh, i guess sashank or someone mentioned right the panelist or hr might not look to the entire resume before interview before interview just before interview or during the interview many times i observed that including me even i i have to accept it we might be going through the resume the other sections of resume during the interview or just before five, 10 minutes before the interview, whom am I interviewing? Or uh, what is this profile is about? Because that's the thing. That's how the ground reality is. Right? And another reason, another reason why uh, that is important is like the first step of filtering might be with the HR or might be the recruiting manager. I'm not the recruiting manager, but I'm one of the panelists. So what might happen is like, I might be getting the resume just before the interview or maybe along with the meeting invite that uh, Satish, you have to take this interview uh, today, 9 p.m., for example. So uh, this is the candidate profile. So only that point of time, I as a, one of the panelists might be taking a look at the resume. Right? So only HR and the recruiting manager or the worst case, only that ATS tool, what are the tool, might be going through our resume as a first filtering criteria. Right? That is the reason we are, we are trying to discuss on this uh, part because that is the first step. It is like a first impression, right? The moment we open, uh, quickly taking a quick glance, that is what they will be focusing on. 
Rajiv, you have a question? Uh, hi, Satish. Thank you. Thanks for, first of all, organizing this, uh, you know, workshop. I was trying to, you know, I, I heard bit, in bits and pieces uh, what Rupesh was saying. So I was just trying to connect more on that one, uh, that, um, you know, the resume, if the experience is of, uh, you know, <clears throat> let's say you have more than 15, 20 years of experience. So, mm. uh, you know, one one thought process is that uh, you, you shorten the thing and you highlight only uh, whatever the main points are in a couple of uh, pages. But mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it becomes a difficult, so you have to write uh, more than two pages or three pages. Mm. So, mm -hmm. means, uh, th this is what, so I, I, I in the last, uh, I, I couldn't uh, get, uh, you know, what Rupesh was trying to conclude, uh, means uh, there. Uh, is it okay that, okay, we write a three-page resume or four-page resume because we want to, um, you know, emph emphasize on, you know, kind of a whole life history sort of thing or mm -hmm. uh, or we still, uh, you know, choose over that, that show only the one which are as a main point, basically. Mm. Yeah, we will uh, touch that point in uh, the next or subsequent slide, uh, Raju, because sure. that is also one of the <laughs> interesting or important aspects. Uh, if I can say one word is, we have to be crisp, we are agile, no? So uh, when your career ob objective is more than two lines, huh. uh, if one thing is my resume does not have a career objective. I just hmm. realized that was the point I was making. That career objective, yeah. I, I would give crisply just saying hmm. what I need and what hmm. you need is same. That hmm. is easy catch. <laughs> that is how we are agile, right? We would, we would do only what is prior, prioritized for this sprint. You forget about everything else. But for custom, customizing the uh, resume for every job, uh, you know, that that would be a need actually, need of the time. Mm. That is another thing. Yes, that's, that's so correct accept. me if I'm wrong, uh, Satish. If I can uh, ask this question to you and to uh, everybody, is only filling up the dots actually. So mm -hmm. just tell me if this is right. What I was now thinking was, I'll make a separate uh, resume for say top management positions. Separate for, uh, say, a mid-level, say, RT, ST kind of roles. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. And maybe I should include Enterprise Agile Code because ultimately it comes above STD. Or should I keep mm -hmm. Enterprise Agile Code separate? This is my only issue. Why? Because mm -hmm. that covers mm -hmm. my almost 12 years of career. And uh -huh. if I am going for Scrum Master, I should not at all give them even a glimpse that I am SPC. Is it right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go one by one, Rupesh. So, yes, the top level leadership roles, yes, we can definitely keep one because uh, the exposure or the involvement and the focus is entirely different compared to any other roles like RT, ST, or maybe the Scrum Master or Agile Coach or any roles. The focus, the involvement, the engagement is entirely different. So, top level leadership definitely a separate resume for sure. RT, ST, and Agile Coach, yes, you might be having one. And Scrum Master and SPC may be still mentioned because I know many SPCs who are still working as Scrum Masters or Project Managers or Program Managers. So there is nothing wrong in mentioning SPC for Scrum Master. And actually, if you know, my basic problem is from my heart, I am still Enterprise Agile Coach. Mm -hmm. And I cannot mm -hmm. find much positions of Enterprise Agile Coach. If I put on LinkedIn, it says no job. Mm. I so my <laughs> most passionate role I don't have. Entirely mm. on LinkedIn. How I don't yes. know. Yes. That's the ground reality. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, you know? Uh, uh, as Rupesh sir said, uh, for top level, man, uh, all that things, they never look about all these rules and what is, what how we help the organization. As in, uh, exactly. As in, that they look up. Mm hmm that yes. role is something different director level and all they don't look up to what SPC and all that. they never look up to all these things they look mm -hmm. up to what value added as an, a director what value he added to the that they look up to so based on that you know, exactly, exactly you know what uh, the, I sent my profile to Satish sir uh -huh. and from where I think also we started thinking of this session is to cut down it to one page, actually, I forgot where I removed the value column, man. And I, <laughs> thanks to him, I added the value column. 
then only i started getting response in and at least people are asking ha you can uh, really head uh, head of ceo coe center of excellence agile scaled agile really now we can see you last time you sent us resume it was not there i says yes sir i i i no no sir, sir actually cutting some... down for one page uh, for you it is uh, like when you are having 26 years of experience and cutting down to one page is not necessary you can go for two pages i also. think sometimes you know i miss out on essential details hmm. on exactly. the value yes. <laughs> Value no value. need to cut down to one single page, yeah, Rupesh. Sir, for, see, again, there is a page level, for context. Mid level seniors, mm. no, that is fine. We can cut down to one page. But for twenty six years of experience, you have to show all <laughs> what you did in past also. Because twenty six is not I, a small number. I have a little different perspective on this. Okay, even even if you are looking at an executive leadership role, like uh, right, like uh, you know, Rupesh sir was saying. i think we should not run into you know five six pages because then that loses the uh, you know the crux of what exactly you are looking out for i think we should be very crisp and clear with respect to what value you can add to that organization right with your experience with your expertise that is something which uh, should be stated okay as as a kind of an elevator pitch in your resume if you can put that definitely it is going to be an eye catching thing you need not run your resume into multiple pages uh, even if you are looking out for a very senior executive uh, leadership roles that's what i feel mm -hmm. so one more uh, sorry i am taking so much time on my question actually i am serious so very sorry satish but this is very critical so for me career adjective of three line and then value additions becomes a section and maybe i can reduce qualification section which is taking mm -hmm. so much time and uh, where all i worked because i worked oh man so many organizations so many clients i just mentioned their uh, names in one line will be better than giving details how much time i did what in 26 years is it yes that maybe? could be uh, one way we can optimize the uh, uh, rupesh size so you know Yeah, yes. Rupesh. One uh, more Rupesh, thing. Uh, Rupesh, Again, uh, uh, it's good to have client. Oh, sorry, organization details. That's fine. But are you mentioning client details? Is it required to mention to hit your CV? Because what will happen sometimes your client, uh, you know, uh, is not to you know disclose what client you are working. For example, if you are working for BFSI, there are multiple players in the BFSI, Bajaj Alliance, ICICI, and all. If you're going to pitch that I work for so many clients, then there will be a crux, right? So you have to think from that part, and it will no, be some data. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Sashank. Sometimes, uh, especially huh. for the leadership roles, right? It might okay. be required to mention, okay, uh, because the uh, the organizations might be expecting the different exposure, right? So yes, uh, based upon the context, it might differ. Context. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the last Until point uh, regarding this. Sir has mentioned actually. You know why uh, I am asking this question? Like I was involved even into many anti-terrorism, anti-drug, uh, DRDO projects. You know, so yeah. I confident that, that is that is that is so all those things you cannot mention. You cannot at all mention those projects. Ha, when you are putting DRDO, anti-con, anti-money laundering, yeah, AML, God. or anti-drugs, so it will be confidential. So it will go to another yeah. tangent. And uh, so this is another one thing. uh when you are into higher leadership role na 18 plus 20 plus 25 plus coming back to scrum master role na it will be a issue reason being i will tell you in my organization itself i have seen people having 20 years of experience work ex they are into spc role as you are rightly said yes spc is nowadays become a scrum master the reason is one and only budget when you are going for an uh, rt or when you are going for a leadership role Right, you are twenty plus. You they hired you for transformation program lead. Right, they don't have budget to occupy. So I'm saying from client perspective, not from organization. So now client will be saying, hey, let me let us remove you. Let me put one other chap who can play some master little bit here and there, and we will tell you where to go where not. Instead of we giving you twice or thrice time of uh, you know mon mon budget uh, mon monetary effect. will hire another chap who is who is having less experience and he can do the same job so again mm -hmm. remember that if you going for scrum master you need to negotiate with your close self if you are earning from let's say 40 to 45 ctc this is a random number i chose 
again you have to come down to the lower segment again from from lower segment you have to justify why you came to lower segment when you are sitting with the hr so you have to think from from that part also ki is it good to come down to scrum master role for rt uh, shashank <laughs> yeah, this, is entirely, uh, okay. this is entirely right. okay this is really different conversation altogether the all reason right. uh, I, yeah. I, i again i have different perspective see all these roles and these hierarchies are coming only from indian context yeah if you go to us right, even within my organization we have 20 30 40 plus years experience folks who are still doing that hands on coding or the uh, playing the uh, i mean different individual contributor roles it is yeah. all up yeah. to the individual right. the perspective of course definitely the organization plus yes. the billing and everything else matters but yes. definitely each and everything the context specific it differs that's right that's that's the okay. spot yes yeah. and anand mentioned in the chat like no client details should be mentioned yes anand definitely even i mentioned yeah. the same so only the domain or the industry can be mentioned like as rupesh mentioned anti money laundering or drdo yeah. or that specific uh, domain or the functionality which we work we can definitely mention right so even my client have a nda that i am not supposed to mention my client name so i will mention one of the banking client that's it yeah. i never okay. mention my client name simple okay so then so i should that's... have domain we should have domains yes. not that yes. that should be enough yes yes sir okay yeah so the last point regarding this career objectives mention only relevant certifications again if required uh, again when i say the relevant certifications uh, a special ic many all the certifications listed we will be anyways have a separate section for the certifications major to offer so within the career objective of the two three lines mention only the relevant certifications which are relevant to that role like pmp and csm yes it is very well valid or maybe the spc uh, or rt whatever it is relevant to that role perspective no no need of mentioning all the detailed certifications within the career objective okay okay let's move on the next part again another important aspect is a key accomplishment so the summary which is where we mention the responsibilities or the roles which we played and everything this major offers on an average it might be covering 3/4 of the page or even one page on whole page altogether major of the cases so what is the main common mistake or main common gap which i observed is like we will start from the our career starting as a fresher or as a initial role like in my case i shouldn't start with qa engineer then the team lead then scrum master then agile coach no it should be from the latest experience it should start with the agile coach or the Uh, the uh, spc or the rt or whatever the role the latest role which i am applying or which i am playing versus which i am applying right so it should be in the descending order which means the latest experience is what we need to start with and the role which we are targeting for that is what because recently uh, in the past one week 10 days i came across at least 20 25 resumes where almost every resume this is the same mistake or same gap or same uh, thing which they may have to focus on improvement that's what uh, th- there is one of the point which i want to mention the uh, key responsibilities of the current role or relevant role we need to highlight specifically for sure and when we say highlight it should be not just highlighting it should be outcome oriented statements our friend vinod mentioned right so what is the benefit the organization achieved or what is the benefit the client got by us playing that role right simple small example any scrum master resume or any agile coach resume if we take or even including the project manager resumes if we take the common points which he observe is like facilitated sprint planning facilitated scrum events facilitated retrospectives okay what's the difference between the other 99 resumes which we got for this one single opportunity or position versus your resume 
what is it you as a individual what is it you as a uh, the applicant in that position for that position what is it you the value add you have brought or the outcome your organization or your client or your project achieved that needs to be clearly called out right that is what and i uh, one visual area wherein you know you can show accomplishments by on a say pie chart or by ch uh, bar yes. chart yes yes there is a that is also for one my, of the way rupesh yes. like i joined evangelism for you know 10 years and this this is the value i created mm -hmm. then uh, a double bar chart yes. kind of you know uh, which can be uh, mm -hmm. uh, horizontal and then i say okay mm -hmm. um, spcrt uh, mid level roles Uh, this much mm -hmm. i can uh, years and this much uh, uh, value addition so like that mm -hmm. in millions for example you know value addition in millions uh, or some other parameters two three lines uh, can be there mm -hmm. in bar chart that yes. multiple bar chart that i was thinking i don't know uh, maybe you can recommend guys uh, that would be better actually. yeah sure yeah we know so actually uh, sadish actually when you are making any it is friendly Uh, resumes you should not mention about table format is not rooms and other than mm -hmm. the pie chart what you are showing that will not detect any writing in words it will help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so okay for Fair ATS friend, uh, for ATS friendly resumes when you are preparing so you have to take care of these things it should, mm -hmm. uh, it should be not in table format whatever you are mentioning and the pie chart what you will be showing it will not Detected anything, so it may create problem for you. Then you will not your resume may get not uh, any job. No, no. Uh, we are talking about key accomplishments. So in this particular section, I was saying instead of you know give some visuals for ATS levels, we will have to uh, put in. We will have more sections, sections which Satish will cover later. Okay. Okay. Uh, shall I add one thing? i don't know how, sure, how much sure, relevant sure. it is uh, so when you are giving when you are going for you know again it will be a you know higher ex end experience when you are going 2025 when you are going face to face in, uh, interview na if you have graphical uh, representation cv ki hey this is what i achieved with the pie chart and all graphic inputs i think that will be put a uh, much you know, better impact when you are going when you are giving the at least cv to read uh, you know having one to one interview over email and when you are going for you know uh, over digital or versus over one to one person personal interview right so that graphics will play more and some other company they have ats standards uh, cvs where they straight away remove those icon and pictorial representation right if you write word that's fine even though you know it's my personal experience when i you know when i putting that uh, psm logo or safe logo sometimes that also got uh, rejected from my from the uh, system because of so ats installed in companies uh, on this one logos can be logos ah. can be shown in your resume for if it is ats friendly also but you have to ah. in uh, it is difficult to bypass ha ah. it is difficult to bypass you can have the your id from that id they can easily make out whether your certificate is expired whether you actually have done or simply randomly numbers you put it that's my opinion yeah So as uh, Sashan said, uh, when you are putting any uh, like uh, badge uh, in your resume, it will not show. It will not be shown uh, in your ATS. So it is better to mention that certified from national certification from so and so organization. That's it. Then, then again, it will be cash. Then you know, what is the difference? What this sir said now? What is the difference between those ninety nine CVs of Scrum Master versus us? Every ninety nine CV of Nerd CV people are putting. Certified Scrum Master, and despite they are doing, and despite you, they no, need to, you know, mentor. You are putting, they, you are putting that uh, idea, right? No, I am not putting now. Earlier, I used to put. Now, I am not putting nothing. Only plain C. I can, I can have that. that yeah. Over to you, sir. Hmm. 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 Okay. Uh, Parman. Uh, how many interviewers go and take a look at the LinkedIn profile if you mention it? <laughs> do they look or it's i used to see to be honest i think i think they look they look yeah because linkedin yeah. is uh, you know is one of the uh, 
platforms which is considered as uh, you know very relevant and professional so uh, i think they they look into your linkedin profile correct so I, maybe i think they cross check yes, with your resume yes that is another thing i am just about to mention and i have very uh, what to say like uh, maybe valuable experience or i don't know how i mentioned but i have very uh, different experience with linkedin one of the panelists in one of the round he opened i mean even before the interview he checked my cross check my linkedin profile the activities i am doing activities in the sense the posts i am doing the content i am sharing the publishing and the comments i am doing each and everything he cross checked and he raised the question satish for this post you got a comment from so and so individual why there is no response from you for that one specific individual asked a question to me for one of the posts i did which i haven't answered or i haven't responded back to that comment so i got that question satish why you haven't responded to this comment can you throw some light on it i was actually shocked or surprised i don't have an answer for at that point of time some way i mentioned i had a one on one conversation with that specific individual and i got it clarified to him that's not the ground reality but that's what i had to uh, move ahead from that specific point so i that's what i mentioned so to your point yes the recruiters the panelists are checking the linkedins so i myself can... also will check the linkedin for sure so we can put uh... that onus of putting the graphics and all on our linkedin maybe resume mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and put most of the text in our regular resume i mean mm -hmm. i am now getting a feeling that i should not write a very big cv maybe just mm -hmm. put all the keywords at the end and put a graphic uh, on the first page which will summarize my mm -hmm. cv so that it gets shortlisted yes. as well it gets uh, hit on the linkedin as well and the you know whoever is reading the resume he is able to understand what i can do what i have done very quickly mm -hmm. without really mm -hmm. i mean looking into too much of clutter because right now my cv is a two pager mm -hmm. with a section on the left side which tells about all my tools and everything i mean all my technical stuff and all those things right side it tells more about the career objective summary and the projects or the customers that i have worked with short summaries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now after this discussion the feeling that i am getting is i mean there is a lot of clutter when i am applying for certain specific roles mm -hmm. when we discuss for scrum master we don't really need too much of technology related stuff mm -hmm. maybe i was thinking if we can have something like uh, what we have in confluence where we we can minimize or maximize some content in a cv like if the interviewer is interested i can he can click there and he can have a look at the detail or maybe you can just continue to read the cv if it is not a uh -huh, uh -huh, something uh -huh. like that i'm not so, sure uh, what i have for that is basically i have uh, one section which if they want details to see how many coes i have you know worked for and what all i have done or how many agile practices i have created i have pushed a link simple link or from my website uh, yeah, and a, what i am testing here is very simple this uh, graphical thing should not take more than the space of your header let's be frank on this you can't take a entire page for this you don't have that much beautiful details so and nobody has so why i am mentioning this is let's be uh, you know don't take me wrong so what i am thinking okay uh, i will make an excel sheet on excel sheet i will do the pie charting and bar charting and everything take the small small screenshot pull it back only in the area which is actually my header on the right side left side mm -hmm. is having mm -hmm. all the details of hai na and in one line they can see one picture second picture third picture fourth picture okay they get all the detail what i have done and for ats i uh, keep the remaining whole page and what all sections are now explained further correct me if i am wrong yes yes that's correct okay rajiv <laughs> i i was just uh, listening to you know the people and i there is one uh, maybe a silly question is there any online tool because there are so many sites are coming up 
is there an online tool anybody aware of where we can feed the jd and we can feed the cv and see you know how uh, it is against the jd how much it is scoring or you know yeah. whether this cv is ats compliant like the most of people are saying it has to be ats compliant mm. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. There is there is, there there is, is a Office sixty five in Office three sixty five. You have it AI area. You ask your question. It yesterday night only just to prepare for this workshop. I tried to do all these things. Okay, sorry, Satish. I was preparing sure. for your day back. <laughs> so, even even there is a free JD check. There is a uh, just Google it free JD check. Uh, you will land up that website. You and that's free the website. Your, it's a free by the way. Uh, yes, uh, you can either copy paste your uh, job description, uh, upload your CV. It will match your CV versus job description. It will give the ranking. According to that particular portal, they are saying eighty percent should be the benchmark, right? Mm -hmm. but, whereas, um, but whereas when I checked mine, it was showing somewhere sixty to seventy-five or seventy-five to somewhere somewhere less than eighty, to be honest. Which uh, you know, eventually my CV got published and. That is a separate ball game altogether. Sometimes uh, it is again totally depend upon your CV, JD, and the person who's taking your interview and what kind of mindset he is having. So you can play with, with that. The keyword will be free JD check, checker or check. You can just Google it. These three keywords, top one, two, three. You can use it and play it. You will have all the things. And of course, as Rupesh said, uh, AI chat you can use for preparing the project manager, program manager CV. You can play around with that. But on top of that, I would like to say, uh, check for Nokri first, LinkedIn second, for job description. Anyone, if you want to customize your CV. But again, okay, mm -hmm. small question huh. here. Very small question. Nokri came up. Anytime I am even clicking on my login, they are sending me a twenty-five thousand demand, and people are calling five hundred times. Is it <laughs> happening with everybody? That's why I stopped <laughs> going to Nokri and Time Job. No, no, so my profile. Not. Yes. It is very cool. is the best way to get the job. Actually, uh, all I job got the uh, job I got from Nokia. So again, okay, it is going different. And one more thing, uh, with context to your LinkedIn, my after getting job in various organizations, people do checking out my profile, especially recruiters, headhunters. To be honest, different organization, persistent and uh, Jaguar Land Rover. Yes, one of the lead HR manager she connected with me over LinkedIn. He said that that was the her. Uh, um, you know, starting statement, hey Shishan, I saw your portfolio for product owner at uh, Land, uh, Land Rover, Jaguar, for Pune campus. Are you interested? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know why. <laughs> but she saw my <laughs> portfolio. And later when I just, uh, you know, asked to, again, Leela Sajasarki, sir, why it is showing up? He said, you put it <laughs> product owner in your uh, headline. That is why it came up to be like this. And my all this, my portfolio was readily, readily available. It, it means my job description, my uh, the roles and response what, what I'm playing over there, my credentials, my everything was ready. So it's anyone can pop in and check whether I'm searching a job, I'm not searching a job. It is open and anyone can check it. So that is the one reason. And eventually, but then we also have to boost ourselves. No, twenty five thousand for right. this service. That <laughs> why to boost? Sir, it is not to use that service. Actually. Mm, yes, and, and yes. Better, it's better to use yourself what you are doing and you are applying on it, you will get the job. But the thing is, when you are taking the premium from them, you, you will be in trouble again because they will be changing day on day, day on day, and you will be in, you will waste your time in that. Yeah. They will and and, and uh, uh, the person who, then this is my uh, you know trade practice to be on. I know some people like it, some don't. Whenever I'm giving interview, people generally say, the HR will send the name. This is the candidate candidate name. The sorry panelist name, interviewer name. I do simple. I will check uh, check out the name, copy paste it over uh, LinkedIn, and see his portfolio. If his mindset, my mindset is almost pay, similar, then will definitely our interview will go in a smoother line. Else, it will go with a different tangent. Okay, <laughs> this excellent I did. I success a lot. You know, uh, ten to fifteen times I did. And the success ratio was somewhere 90 plus. So it helped me a lot. So do check out this one as well. Of course, this is a, again, different tangent. <laughs> that is, sir, more to you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Raju, you are good with the, uh, your point. You can go ahead. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hey, uh, Satish, I think everything you are. Uh, one way one, please. Uh, see yeah, us. Can we uh, wait on it? Like uh, Prem is in the queue. Oh, okay. Fine, fine. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Prem, go on, you, please. Yeah. So I think uh, the last uh, use case or the business case, as we should say, uh, what if we check our own profile against a given JD? Some tool is going to do something about it, and it gives us a score, right? So I'm just trying to connect this with using images in our profile, which someone kind of pointed out will be helpful. But the point is, images may not be well read in terms of the content, right? So, which means mm -hmm. assume a HR who is going to see like 100 or 200 profiles in a day, they cannot go and manually make, uh, make everything, right? So they, if they try to use a tool, something like that, and if we present everything in a visualistic way, and not textual way, then the problem is our profile may not get picked up because it is represented in a imagerial way, which may not be mm -hmm. rendered by that tool. And there are yes. chances where yes. it may not get picked up. So I'm still buying the thought that we should write more text. But of course, uh, I think one another person also raised that it is a lot cluttered. You will have to reduce the clutter. But what I still think that is it should be more textual. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you have, you want, you are more a uh, image based person or a visual uh, related person, then you can put it. But don't put very sensitive information in the images, right? Mm -hmm. Because it is not mm -hmm. going to be read. You will have to put all your accomplishment or uh, key summary like those items still here. Uh, we'll have to think what really needs to be shown visually uh, in a resume. That should be a different context. but. Anything which is key, which talks about your experience or talks about your summary should still be in visual words and shouldn't be in images is what I think. Yeah. Thanks, so, thanks, uh, thanks definitely. Is it, a, is it a good question to ask? Uh, so we should have a visual resume and we should have a, T a ATS resume and send both if you are sending an email, <laughs> fine. But what you will do in case you are, uh, you know, doing a quick apply on say LinkedIn, then I should only send the ATS, that's all. Yes. No other no 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 right? so, yeah. See, if ATS cannot read your image based profile which you have currently, then you will have to the, go back to the normal textual. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, bringing back that uh, Agile Manifesto principle number 10 simplicity. <laughs> my yeah. resume is a pretty simple text format. I don't even have a single icon or image in my resume. So, yeah. I mean, I don't have, I don't want to do that as well. So that's another reason I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> I haven't did that as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, the list of certifications, like moving ahead, list of certifications, uh, list the relevant certifications first again. And uh, I want to include version or year. Some cases it might be relevant. Some cases it might not be. Uh, so whether we want to include it or not, it is up to us. And the version is explicitly coming from the scale agile. <laughs> Rupesh will agree with me. But so, but otherwise, we can just simply mention the year of certification, and we can exclude irrelevant certifications or certifications which might not be relevant from the role we are applying for. Having a list of certifications can help, but again, we might have to tweak our own. We may have to play around. How many certifications or what all the certifications we want to mention? Right? Uh, Satish, so, I have uh, something to share here. See, irrelevant certification. Sure, I had my own uh, experience uh, saying that uh, mm -hmm. certifications not with respect to uh, Scrum uh, added value to my job. I mean, to my uh, thing when I was interviewed by the client. So, he, yes, happy that, okay, uh, see, I also want the same experience what we had. So you could uh, value it as an auditor or as a assessment mm. officer. So that also uh, helped me in that. If we have to have relevant experience, that is still okay. But these mm. supporting certifications would add value to uh, your profile. Supporting will definitely help, Pavan. Like see, for my case, I, I will still have my PMP 
the certification in my resume, even though I'm applying for agile coach role, right? I'm talking about like the IS2QB certification or uh, some certifications, right? Where, which you might have started did in our beginning of our credits. So I was picked up for associate director, agile DevOps in KPMG, right from mm -hmm. LinkedIn. And they saw that uh, he, that person who called me up, he said, okay, so I'll be your referrer. And I am also the person who's recruiting, but also I looked into your, you are, you have been PMP from PM work three, four, five. I said, yes, you did a P, uh, pr Prince two practitioner also. And then you jumped into jail. I said, sir, whatever work was given. And then you also did SPC three, uh, four, four point six five, And now you're six. I said, sir, if they wanted the latest version, how I could not have done. Okay, then we were thinking you will be senior manager, you are associate director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, just sharing. Yes. Hey, yes. See, okay. Are you good? Uh, the projects and experience, again, the list the latest project or the role first. To highlight the relevant role specific details. Uh, role is like again the target role which you are applying for, right? And again, as we discussed, it could be a combination of two roles like project manager, scrum master, or any other combinations which are will work. And the outcome oriented statements is what again we need to focus on. One thing I want to explicitly focus on or highlight is like avoid repetitive or redundant statements. What do you mean by this? If we have already mentioned that in the key accomplishments or summary section or in the project one and again in the project two, that is a way we can reduce or we can focus on minimizing the content. Right. So uh, three days ago or four days ago, like over the last weekend, last uh, Saturday or Sunday, I was re reviewing one resume where project one, Project two and uh, what do you say the key accomplishments? All the sections are the same points repeated, same points repeated for all the two projects plus the key accomplishments. So, if I'm the panelist, if I'm going through the same points again, same point, same statement, same statement again and again, it doesn't bring any value to me as a panelist or as a recruiter. So, what is that we want to explicitly mention? or highlight regarding that specific project, we need to mention that. Uh, sir, if you please, already I mentioned, here. yes, Pavan. I, I have a question here. So if I could avoid repetitive redundant statements, maybe in a previous organization and the current organization, uh, the roles could be same and uh, one need to uh, represent that on the resume. Is it still okay? Exactly. Yes, it is still okay. That's where the point number three comes. If it is a, outcome oriented statement, it won't be a repetitive, right? See, one project we might have worked as a, maybe the uh, uh, scrum master where the, maybe I'm just taking an example, velocity might have improved by 20%. The other project, maybe again, the velocity might have improved by 15% something. It is not a repetitive statement because we are bringing the outcome. The outcome is entirely different. The team is entirely different. If you are just simply mentioning, uh, help the team improve their velocity. Right. There is an exact statement which I picked up from that resume. The key accomplishments, project one, project to the same point, help team improve their velocity. That is not outcome oriented. And that is a repetitive or redundant statement as per me, as per me. Okay. Does it yeah, answer but if you question? In one project, you are helping them improve velocity by 35%. And in another one, because of your uh, everything, you improve the velocity to 46%. I think it's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, it's a valuable current contribution. Definitely. Repeat. That's where if it is outcome oriented, it won't be repetitive. Right? The, the moment we bring in that number, like 36% or 45%, that is unique to that specific project. We definitely need to mention it. You got so in this which? particular section, if suppose I, uh, I have more than five parameters that I've worked on, and I have some retrospective, uh, you know, cobweb diagrams. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, we, uh, see, I, I, and now I am uh, concrete on one thing after this session is, I'll make a visual re resume, I'll make a ATS resume. In the visual resume, 
should i go ahead with a cobweb diagram for different companies what i produced that should be good mm -hmm. yes if it is a visual resume yes you can mention that okay uh pavan does it answer your question as well yes yes yeah if it is like outcome oriented the moment we define explicitly that outcome oriented it will never be a repeat because if you mention that improved velocity by 36% for project 1 and project 2 there's a red flag again no two projects no two teams or as such will be having the same outcome it will be unique Absolutely. or it will be different okay the linkedin we are not touching too much on linkedin we just discussed some of the points so one of the common mistake again what i am observing is i just highlighted on this uh, slide or this picture the job description the details everything is mentioned clearly here and they mentioned the last line interested share the resume at so and so email address by going to that post and just simply mentioning interested none of the panelists will go and take a look at our resume or our linkedin and they will respond back when the email address is explicitly mentioned take time and apply or send your resume to that take email address that is one common mistake many times many times this is this screenshot is from yesterday post one of the yesterday's post so it is still happening and a couple of folks who reached out to me explicitly said that satish whatever the posts are we are getting on coming across on linkedin i'm showing interest or i'm um, asking them to review my profile i'm not getting any calls we won't we might not we might not because if i'm the panelist or if i'm the hr i will be just pushing it on linkedin and i might be busy doing my other deliverables i might not even go back and take a look at the post until couple of days so we are missing that valuable time why to wait or why to expect someone to take a look at our resume or our linkedin and then say that hey satish yes your uh, linkedin or your profile is looking yeah, interesting can you share it by the time maybe uh, they might have already got some 100 profiles so is it a good idea to give a screenshot of the linkedin uh, when we are replying to this mail uh, along with this visual and ats not explicitly required rupesh we can mention as uh, mentioned in the linkedin something uh, came across this your post on linkedin and i'm interested to apply for this position simple okay no need to add that uh, screenshot because they are the one who posted it so if i am the one who posted i know that i posted regarding this opportunity on linkedin so i know that no need to refer it again or we can mention like uh, as per re with reference to your uh, opportunity so and so opportunity we posted on linkedin because uh, what's happening with me is i am posting three four uh, different uh, job descriptions if someone comes and mention hey i am interested in uh, applying for this role hey which role i don't know i am posting some 10 15 opportunities so how do i know or how do i remember which role so mention which role and maybe if uh, possible or feasible which date them post as well as with reference to your post regarding your agile coach opportunity you posted on linkedin on 23rd february here i am attaching my resume for your reference so okay. even in subject you can write down no that okay this role this yes. location will yes. be available for whatever yes 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 some they are giving the subject name as well like what to mention so we need to take a look at that as well and we need to explicitly uh, make use of that okay and yes so coming to the last uh, three questions we got what could be the best optimal way to ex expressing experience who has more than 10 plus years oh have we i am expecting that we already covered this do we really need to discuss this now
Are you I good think with this question? To show your value uh, to the organizations, different mm-hmm. percentages, and uh, even if you are not putting images, just say okay, this much percentage improvement in this, 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 this. Say so three, four things if you can put out. Uh, that is the most valuable. Uh, with of course whatever technology you used. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's it. And how to define career gaps due to personal issue? We there could be various reasons. Uh, earlier, it used to be only uh, women or ladies used to take the career gaps, but even now, uh, with gents as well or with men as well, it is happening. So try to be uh, as much straightforward. The reason and try to explain or try to set the context to the uh, the hr or the panelist and see what we can do but def- definitely we will be getting that question we need to uh, expect or we, we should be ready or prepared with what the reason why the career gap has happened and uh, along with that we just need to try to showcase what is it we use that time to uh, focus on the bridging the maybe building a new skill or sometimes some of the mem- members uh, they mentioned that they help their family with their family business or the health issues of their family what are the reason try to mention it try to uh, explicitly uh, bring that point agree to you sir and uh, especially uh, for women uh, they won't ask much if you are saying i came from maternity i have some personal thing to take care of bigger organization in which i work cap germany i'm working with sel tech now they won't uh, grill much once you say this one and if it's genuine they won't touch you uh, they won't dig you for to be honest that is the word i would like to say further uh, as lila kathisa say if you give them fake info and you got selected by any means they have their own whole means to check out and they're working for bigger clients so they can have the check by any means they can simply hit with your pan id and they can do multiple checks so never ever because i myself have after three years of work experience i myself have eight months of gap and i proudly said yes i do have and i uh, what i did in those i just upgraded my skill set i polished my skill set and i you know check my business business acumen and yeah that's it so there is no further uh, question on this particular statement because they know if i'm saying right so they can have, they have a whole means so if i try to you know mingle around them it will be difficult to take care of yeah. okay and uh, the last looks like it is a, just a statement not a question so i'm doing that yes chandra shikran yeah i have i have been searching for For the job or the last four months. So, what can I mention that uh, there is a career gap means? Mm-hmm. Uh, in in your case, like also, what is it you are doing uh, during this uh, four months of gap? Or what no, is it you I'm are focusing? Keeping on searching the jobs and then a few uh, skill sets I am keep on improving. That is Scrum Master related experience I am you know involving in. Uh, uh, that uh, sessions and all things so that uh, I can improve my knowledge on the Scrum. And uh, mm-hmm. yes. safe uh, yeah, So yes. how can I showcase that? I didn't get any. Sorry, I didn't get job in, in till now. So how can I mention that one? Yeah. Uh. So j- just now as you mentioned, right? So you can showcase. You need to showcase what is it the real value add you learned or you want to highlight or you want to showcase within these four months of time. You need to clearly call it out uh, to the HR or to the recruiter or the panelist team, and you need to you need to be clear about it. Right. So it need not be the certification, but what are the learnings you had, and how you want to showcase or how you want to highlight, and how is it going to help your target role which you applied for? That you need to clearly call out. Uh, yes, Purvaja. Uh, sorry, sir. This Sachin here. Uh, my yes, yeah, Sachin. So uh, yes, yes. nowadays everyone is asking for like immediate joiner or how soon they can join. But mm-hmm. at senior levels, there will be like notice period minimum two to three months. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in such cases, um, what what should be the plan exactly? I'm not sure, to be frank, <laughs> because uh, that is the organization specific, the role specific, and the context specific. Mm, to be frank, I don't have an answer uh, for that such thing. Because that's a common challenge or problem many of us might be going through. Yeah. Like KPMG, for example, when I was recruiting for many positions, they had a clear, uh, you know, whip. Only get candidates who do not have a notice period. <laughs> so we have to be, I mean, ready to. Uh, um, yeah, I think many people are ready, but ma many people are waiting. Like uh, you know, notice period is the basic criteria many are uh, looking for. That's the reason all may put like three months as the notice period we have. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but yes this is a point i mean how to drag the attention of uh, you know uh, the organizations who want people who don't have a notice spirit that is something which we have to get to know that's a million dollar question <laughs> none of us have an answer because <laughs> we are still <laughs> candidates who are trying to get into a job <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's fine correct yeah. okay. But yes, in recent one of the interviews I heard, like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know which organization it was, but I heard, like, they usually recruit the people who are not searching for a job. And I don't know what was the criteria, but yeah. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> okay. That is mm. interesting. Okay, yeah. If we can quickly uh, connect to this uh, slides, just a couple of minutes, we can, we'll wrap it up. And we can just... Uh, Quickly, out. I can stop my sharing. Just ah. take a couple of minutes. So this is so. That, can I share something as we discuss? Speak, uh... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Sri. Yeah, sorry. Have... <laughs> I. <laughs> yeah, please go ahead, Sri. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. The the session I'll uh, join a little late, and uh, when I joined, there was a discussion was happening on this ATS uh, compatible mm -hmm. resume and uh, LinkedIn uh, one. My question is like, uh, uh, so no, I mean, as in the discussion, we said like uh, uh, many of the resumes are getting shortlisted on the ATS uh, 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 platform and uh, with the job description. But how we have to, uh, uh, you know, do we require to update on the LinkedIn also the same thing? Uh, so I think uh, one of the uh, session person, he, uh, he was mentioning he got a job in the Jaguar and all and uh, he uh, for the you know uh, interviewing the candidate he will search uh, in the LinkedIn and he matches with the profile whether it is suitable or not my it question was, was like if, if I alter my profile with the job description then how it would uh, you know uh, to do on the LinkedIn mm, mm, mm. yes so uh, altering when we say we might not be doing too much uh, cinemas, right? From the resume perspective, right? See, th okay, that okay. might be based upon the uh, see what happens many many cases is like uh, the panelists will be taking a look at uh, what is the relevant experience Srinivas or Satish or someone is bringing, right? and what is the current uh, roles or the current responsibilities they are looking for or they are playing it, right? So. Many times, this uh, there might be a gap in the LinkedIn versus the resume. Reason in the resume, we might be mentioning the role we are playing, but in the LinkedIn, we might be mentioning the designation we are having from the organization perspective. So there might be a gap between the resume and LinkedIn, but that should not be too much. Is what my point. Right. So uh, the designation we might be mentioning in the LinkedIn. But okay, we need okay. at least the project experience and the responsibilities you are playing. There should not be too much of gap, right? And See, let's suppose like small point there here, very small point, uh, Satish, mm -hmm. which is when you have a designation, you have the roles, so you can mention there. Okay, it's like I was an associate direct, uh, director, agile DevOps, but I have served uh, in different for different clients. A scrum master, senior scrum master, agile coach, enterprise agile coach, for these 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 clients, for this this, this bling, this all value. This mention can be enough in the LinkedIn. 
Is it right or wrong? Yes, yes. That's correct, uh, Rupesh. Yeah, Prashant? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, sorry, actually, I uh, joined late. Uh, but my question is slightly different because I heard all the communications and all discussions and all. Uh, now, what happens is uh, uh, I have a total 20 plus years experience. And my domain is quite different. Like I was uh, belong to telecom domain. And I'm very mm -hmm. interested in, you know, uh, joining in the, uh, I have recently completed PMP. And now mm -hmm. I'm switching over to IT project management kind of roles. But mm -hmm. uh, hearing to the all these things, <laughs> actually, I, I need some guidance from all of you, all your seniors. Like, is there any way, like, uh, see, I, I was doing all that thing, but not uh, as agile way or not as the standard ways where, you know, PMP defines or the scrums or strings or something like that. So do we have, like, uh, the people like me, do we have uh, any guidelines we need to follow to come into the IT, uh, you know, project management kind of, uh, you know, roles? So is it quite difficult for us to enter into the uh, this uh, new this thing? Uh, one thing I can mention, Prashant. Uh, so uh, based upon the role, or the not the role, based upon the responsibilities they mention, mm -hmm. is what uh, it differs. Because some of the organizations, they explicitly mention uh, at least recently in the past uh, three, four months, what my observation is like, they're talking about technical project manager. Yeah. Which means the project manager is also expected to uh, know or aware of the technical aspects as well. Whereas some organizations, they just look for a pure project manager. Which means the domain, everything might not be relevant, but they, uh, they want someone to take care of the project. Right. Of course, the domain might be relevant, but might not be the technical expertise, right? So we need to filter out what sort of uh, uh, job descriptions they're asking or they're focused on the technical specializations versus the regular things. So accordingly, you can start uh, applying or you can start uh, taking a look at it. So there will be, there will be chances as per you, uh, maybe technical requirements or whatever requirements they have, we need to filter it out and we need to apply accordingly. Yeah, yes, I think yes, right. here he brings us to a very important question. Mm. Forget about how many jobs you applied in a day. If you apply mm. for one job, which is worth mm. you, and you've done the right thing, bro, you'll definitely get it. Exactly. Yeah. It's not quantity, it is quality. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks, uh, Prashant. And again, Prashant, we can touch base offline and we can discuss further as well. Okay. Sure. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, and uh, just to wrap up, uh, like these are few virtual events by SS Ajal Gurus that tend to timelines. We will publish it and uh, what else, okay. Uh, in-person events, we have few in-person events as well coming up uh, through different uh, organizations, like Agile Virgin, couple of events, APJ and Pune, Enterprise Scrum at Bangalore. These are a couple of events. And Agile Network India is doing uh, different events as well. And uh, Rupesh is doing one session on 25th. Uh, am I correct, Rupesh? You're doing a session on uh, Zira Align on 25th, right? Yes, it's a deep dive. Basically, what I'm trying to yes. do is I'm not bringing in the sandbox, which everybody mm -hmm. shows and says, okay, do this, do that, and this is how you can do. And people fail to understand, guys, what is beyond it when you what you need to do in a job how to use mm -hmm. them and actually go right up to the senior management, the CXO level guy, what he needs, uh, uh, your managers, what do they need? People miss out on all those gaps. And then they, they are pushed out of an organization in six months. Why? So those <laughs> things which actually I take up in my mentorship sessions, I have tried to drill down to show people how over Ajira, Ajira line works. Mm -hmm. What is the gap which Agile DevOps could not cover where Jira line has started working on? Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, uh, folks, if in case you are interested, you can touch base with Rupesh and you can have that conversation uh, as well. And I shared my LinkedIn profile. If in case you are not connected, we can touch base and we can have it. So, am I allowed okay. to share my, say, uh, my uh, email or uh, my WhatsApp number for further inquiry here? Yes, 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 you can, you can. So, this is my WhatsApp, guys. 
I'm readily also giving a lot of mentoring sessions for everybody. Uh, Daniel Rupesh is uh, sharing his uh, contact number. We can touch base with him. Just a minute. Taking a while to write. Uh, Rupesh, uh, you are linked in as well. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a minute. Uh, let me try to bring in, even in case I have. Yeah, yeah, you must be having it. <laughs> <laughs> but I am not able to write, man. Something wrong. I got it. LinkedIn. Rupesh. Or you can touch base with me, folks. Uh, I can also share Rupesh details. Yeah, maybe you can give my phone number also. 704 yeah, yes. I am not able to write down. Sure, sure. 7042 Very easy image. You know, mirror image number. 7042 Okay, yes. Okay, then. But guys, this is a paid session, huh? It is a paid session. Yes, it is a paid session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay then, yeah, that's it uh, for today. And yeah, uh, we have a lot, we have a lot more things to discuss about the interviews and everything. We will discuss in uh, another follow-up session. Oh yes, yes. We session. will actually require a follow-up session if it is possible, and uh, if you are available, if you can do it uh, next week, it would be great because definitely every one of us will be trying to update our resumes and see the responses. Mm -hmm. You know. Sure, sure. Maybe next week, next more tonight, whenever you feel comfortable. Sure, sure. Thank you, Satish. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Thanks, bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy.